It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to solve and create linear equations with different types of solutions. Here's our question today. Our question is going to have four parts. We'll do each part one at a time. Here's part A. We're asked to consider this equation. X subtract 4 is equal to 16. We're asked what is the solution to the equation, and we need to show or explain how we get our answer. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video here, do your best work, and then come back to see my solution. Good luck. Welcome back. So again, we're considering this equation, and then we're going to find the solution, which means we're solving for x. So let's rewrite our equation so that we can solve it. And again, keeping in mind we're solving for the value of x that makes this true. So the first thing we want to do is isolate that variable term. So we want to do get it all alone. So we want to do the inverse of subtract 4. And what we do to one side, we must do to the other to keep equality. So the inverse or opposite of subtracting 4 is to add 4, which again, to keep equality, we're going to do the same to both sides. Negative 4 and 4 are what we call a zero pair. They're opposites and have a sum of 0. So that means we are left with x plus 0, which is just x, and 16 plus 4 is 20. So by solving this way, we're saying that our solution is x equals 20. But let's check our work to make sure that we're accurate. So I'm going to rewrite this where x is no longer x. We're going to replace it with the value 20. So 20 subtract 4 needs to equal 16 if we did our work correctly. 20 subtract 4 is indeed 16 and it checks. So therefore we know the solution to this equation is x equals 20. Let's move on to part b. Part b asks us to write a linear equation in one variable that has infinitely many solutions. We need to show the process of simplifying the equation to prove that it has infinitely many solutions. So once again, it's your turn. I'm going to ask you to pause the video here, do your best work, and then come back to see my solution. Good luck. Welcome back. So we're going to write a linear equation in one variable with infinitely many solutions, and we also have to show the process of simplifying to prove that what we wrote is true. Let's begin by understanding what infinitely many solutions means to a linear equation in one variable. After we have simplified or gone to solve for x, what's going to happen is we're going to have a statement of fact that's true. Something is going to equal something. And if you follow the algebraic process of solving an equation, you're going to end up with a numerical statement that's true. So something like 2 is equal to 2, and it checks out, right? We all know that 2 is equal to 2. It could also be something like negative 5 is equal to negative 5. But as we go through the process of solving the equation, we're going to eliminate the variable terms. There won't be another variable, so there'll be no x left, and we're going to have a true numerical statement. So now, to go ahead and write our linear equation in one variable, we're going to write an algebraic expression with an x that is equal to itself. And that will result in infinitely many solutions, and we'll also show the process to prove it. So let's replace this box with an algebraic expression. I'm going to take one from part A. I'm going to say x plus 4 equals x plus 4. Now, we're going to prove that this linear equation in one variable, I used x, has infinitely many solutions, meaning any number you want that you can imagine, when you put it in for x, remains true for the statement that there is not one num solution. There are infinitely many. So we want to collect variable terms all to the left first. So I'm going to do the inverse, and I'm going to subtract x from each side to keep equality. This creates a zero pair, as does this. x subtract x is zero, making a zero pair, leaving us positive 4 on the left equals positive 4 on the right. And there we have our true numerical statement. And we now have proved that x plus 4 equals x plus 4 is a linear equation in one variable with infinitely many solutions. Let's move on to part C. Part C says consider this equation. 3 multiplied by the quantity 4 plus x is equal to 7x subtract 2 
multiplied by the quantity 2x plus 3. We're asked how many solutions does the equation have, and we need to show or explain how we get our answer. So again, you're going to pause the video here, do your best work, and then come back to see my solution. Welcome back. So we're going to begin by identifying that we're finding the number of solutions for this equation. And I have three that I need to distribute to start solving this equation. So 3 multiplied by 4 is 12. Then we go 3 multiplied by x, because we get to multiply by both terms inside, 4 and positive x. 3 multiplied by positive x is positive 3x. Then we're going to bring down our equal sign and our 7x term. And then we see that we have this negative 2. Remember, subtract 2 is the same as adding negative 2. So negative 2 multiplied by 2x is negative 4x. Negative 2 multiplied by 3 is negative 6. Next step, I see that I have like terms on the left. So we're going to clean up. We're going to combine our like terms. So let's bring down our 12 plus 3x equals 7x subtract 4x is 3x. Those are like terms. Bring down our subtract 6. Now we're going to collect all our variable terms to the left. You could collect them to the right too. I just always go to the left. So the inverse of add 3x is to subtract 3x. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. I recognize here that I have a zero pair, so that gives me 12 plus 0, or 12, equal to 3x and negative 3x are a zero pair, opposites having a sum of 0, and bring down my negative 6. This is a false statement. 12 does not equal negative 6, telling me that I have no solution. There is no way to solve this because there is no value of x that will make this equation true. All right, here's part d. We're asked to consider this equation. 3 eighths x subtract 6 is equal to 1 half multiplied by the quantity 4 subtract x. We're asked how many solutions does the equation have, and we need to show or explain how we get our answer. You know the drill. Go ahead and pause, solve on your own, and then come back to see my solution. Welcome back. So we're going to determine how many solutions this equation has. So we're going to rewrite the equation while we're distributing. So we are going to distribute the 1 half to the 4 and the negative x term inside the parentheses. So let's bring down our left side of the equation. And then 1 half times 4, half of 4 is 2. And then 1 half times negative x is negative 1 half x. So there are no like terms on either side. So we're going to collect variable terms to the left. So the inverse of subtract 1 half x is going to be to add 1 half x to the like term on the left. So I can see I have my zero pair here. But to combine these like terms, I need to get a common denominator. So we're going to go to a common denominator of 8, which means I need to multiply both by 4, which gives me 4 eighths x. So 1 half x and 4 eighths x are equivalent terms. Now I can add. 3 eighths x plus 4 eighths x is 7 eighths x. Bring down my subtract 6, and over here, because this is a zero pair, it's going to be equal to 2. Now I want to isolate my variable term now that I just have 1 on one side. So the inverse of subtract 6 is to add 6, and again, to keep equality, we're going to do it to both sides. Here's my zero pair, and I bring down my 7 eighths x, and that is equal to 2 plus 6, which is 8. To continue solving for x, I'm going to do the inverse of multiply by 7 eighths, which would be to divide by 7 eighths. But the same thing in dividing fractions is to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this coefficient, and that is 8 sevenths. I'm going to do what I do to one side, I must do to the other. And any value multiplied by its reciprocal is 1. So that's 1x, or just x, is equal to 8 times 8, 64 sevenths. So x is going to be equal to 64 sevenths, which means this equation has one solution. 
And there you have it. That's how we solve and create linear equations with no solution, infinitely many solutions, and one solution. I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.